Welcome to Youth in Action. In today's program, we have Martin Gadu, the Intech Program Manager at Nairobi Trust. Martin, karibu sana to the show. Tell us, what is Nairobi Trust? Thank you, Granis, and thank you for having Youth in Action program. Uh, Nairobi Trust is an organization, and profit organization, that bridges the socio-economic gap and targets uh, young people from an uh, under-resourced background equipping them with ICT and probability skills. Mm -hmm. The organization was started 23 years ago, and over, for, over a period of those 23 years, we have impacted over 100,000 young people with ICT skills. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what is the drive behind Nairobi Trust? The drive behind Nairobi Trust, uh, actually Nairobi Trust was founded by three Dutch ladies. Mm -hmm. They came in Kenya in, in 1999, and they were dealing with this organization called Madari Youth Sport Association, MISA. And uh, they thought, how can we uh, empower these young boys and girls who are playing football within MISA? And that's how they coined the Nairobi Trust. Mm -hmm. So our roots are from Netherlands, and uh, we are happy to have been in existence for that long. Mm -hmm. Our drive is to ensure like, uh, the young people from under-resourced background or urban informal settlement get vocational ICT skills that can get them entry-level jobs within the ICT subsector. Mm. So what platforms do you use to encourage, uh, to encourage the youth development in this uh, trust? Uh, actually, positive youth de development is one of our philosophies. We have two philosophies within, within aerobics. Positive uh, youth development and digital opportun opportunities. Over a long period of time, people have been seeing young people as people who create chaos. Mm -hmm. But we realize that young people have a lot of energy, they have a lot of creativity, and they have a broader thinking. So we decided how can we harness uh, that, that potential mm -hmm. and make it in good use. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to see young people not as a problem to the, to the society, but as a, gen, uh, as, as a population that has uh, what it takes to take this country forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, harnessing the youth's potential takes a collective unit. So how do you incorporate the elderly generation into these programs? About uh, collective effort, I would like to underscore something here. Nairobi believed in partnership, believes in partnership. And in everything that we do, we have, we have anchored in, into the partnership. And how we encompass the elderly is also, we have other programs mm -hmm. that target even people who are beyond the ages of 24. Uh, we have programs that uh, target women, mm -hmm. uh, and we realize like uh, these young people, they have mothers, they have fathers. How do we ensure that they understand what their young people do when they come to Nairobi? And that's how we encompass everyone. We also even have programs for the kids. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have a program we have been piloting with uh, Google called Opia, and it focuses on training young people how to learn mathematics using Funway. Mm -hmm. There is a mobile application, and there is this fun way, like, uh, if John had five apples, and he had two, uh, how many was he left with? Like, teaching simple calculation, like, uh, multiplication, addition, division. Mm -hmm. And apart from, uh, from the ICT program that we have for young people, we also have a program on SRHR, sexual production and reproductive health and rights. We are cognizant of our young people, they have sexual needs, and we have to teach them about how to know about their rights and even how to access services. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how do people get to access you and at Nairobi, and how do you do they join the programs? Thank you very much for that question. How people access us, one, you can get us through our social media, that's one avenue. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, we are so much anchored into partnership. So we partner with the community-based local organization, like here in Kisumu, mm -hmm. we'll be targeting the local organization to help us in mobilization. So some of these young people, they are already working with those uh, community-based organizations. Mm -hmm. So we are going to reach them and tell them we have this program. And how can people join the program? We always have our application online. For instance, in Kisumu, if one wants to join the program, the application is apply kis.nairobits.com. Mm -hmm. 
So if you go to that link, you're just going to get a Google form, you just fill in, and then uh, after that, you're going to contact you and invite you for an interview. Mm -hmm. yes. So would you mention uh, specifically the programs for the kids, for the young people, in their names and what they do? Nairobi, it's one of its core programs is uh, ICT, or the training program that's in ICT. And that program is called Intech, in Food, Innovation and Technology. And the Intech program has six programs, sub-programs inside it. One of them is a DLP, which is a 12 weeks course, or Digital Classic Program. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes 12 weeks, and within 12 weeks, we teach young people the basics of ICT, graphic design, digital marketing, online work, life skills and soft skills, and eventually uh, they graduate, mm -hmm. and it's a certificate level. Then the other program within Intech, uh, it's called uh, AMP, or Advanced Multimedia Program. And AMP, uh, now the students who have gone through the DLP transition to the AMP. It's a 36 weeks course, or you can call it nine months, which is divided into two segments. Uh, we have uh, 24 weeks in-class training and 12 weeks industrial attachment. So once they get to the AMP, the first two months, they, they are trained uh, design and development. That's coding. After eight weeks, they specialize for 16 weeks and either do design or multidisciplinary design or front-end web development. And after they are done with the 24 weeks in class, they proceed to industrial attachment for another 12 weeks. That's a total of 36 weeks. AMP is a diploma level. DLP is a certificate level. Mm -hmm. Apart from those mainstream programs, we also have a program called VIT, which is a one-week uh, uh, long training, a short program that focuses on teaching people how to become digital storytellers using smartphones. Wow. So that one, we can take it to any organization that you have partnered with. Even here in KBC, if you need, we come and teach maybe part of your team about digital storytelling using their smartphone. Mm -hmm. We can organize a program for them. Another program that we have is a program called uh, LMI, Labor Market Integration. And this program within the intake ensures that uh, the people who finish through our program, we are able to place them at the internships. So it has a fully dedicated personnel who goes through for internship or even making company visit to ensure mm -hmm. the people who are in those internships, they are doing what's expected of them, including signing their logbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a program called Core Acumen. And we realized like uh, we were producing very good graphic designer. We are producing very good uh, developers, but they were lacking uh, life skills and soft skills. What we did, our uh, core acumen ensures that we prepare them for the job market. And core acumen takes 20% of our training. So every Friday when you have training, we bring guest trainers. We can even invite you to come to have speak to our student. We don't even do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. We invite the market expert to come and speak with our student. We conduct even mock interviews. We conduct even pitching events for our student and even giving them feedback before they go to the job market, including reviewing their uh, job applications and their CVs and cover letters. Yes. I am curious to understand, are these trainings pro bono or do, does someone have to pay up for it? Our programs are, are sponsored. Okay. To train one person from the DLP to the AMP level, it costs us like a hardly thousand Kenya shillings. But uh, we don't give our programs for free. And this is because we have realized, like uh, most, if you give things for free, they take it for granted. Mm -hmm. So our programs, we introduce something called commitment fee. And for our DLP level, the center that pays most pays 5,000. Mm -hmm. And here in Kisumu, we'll be charging 3,500 for 12 weeks. In our AMP level, we charge 6,500. So in total, someone going through our program from the DLP to the AMP, they pay a maximum of 11,500. Whereas it cost us hardly 1,000 to train that young person. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how long is the training? Uh, the DLP, as I mentioned, is 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. For the AMP, it takes 36 weeks. So in total, the entire intake program is 12 months or one year. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, what, uh, how have the programs helped so far? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have impacted over hardly 1,000 young people, giving them ICT skills that uh, introduces them to the job market. And I, um, I can confidently say that our program has been very successful. We have even people working for Microsoft, people working for Google, people working for Bank of Kigali, people working for Equity Bank, people working for Edu Inter Edu International, uh, Booking.com, all those companies. And if you go to any major design agency in Nairobi, 
maybe be scanned, school digital, or Gilvy, Zorojo. You are going to find our students or our graduates who are working there as designers mm -hmm. or web developers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So are those trainings full time or it's depending on someone's program? It's a very strict program for the intech program, both the DLP and the AMP within the intech. They are very time intensive. So for the DLP in some of our center within Nairobi, the training is full day for five days a week for 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Here in Kisumu, we'll be running the DLP for half a day, five days a week for 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. For the AMP, that's not negotiable. The training has to be full day for five days a week for 24 weeks in class training and 12 weeks in industrial attachment, full day. Wow. So they are quite time, in uh, time intensive and uh, the content is quite packed from the program. If I take you through the program, you're going to see the content of it. It's not just normal computer packages. It goes beyond the normal computer packages. And we have to teach all these skills within that short duration. And uh, how are you able to mobilize such commitment from a young person who has just finished school and they're like, I'm not going into books again? One, our program is not like a, a, not, it's like a vocation training. We focus on hands-on skills. We are not even testing like uh, you have an exam to do at the end of it. We focus on you acquiring skills. And we try to make the, our learning to be very fun. You are going to realize if you visit our offices, like over three quarter of our human resource are young people. Mm -hmm. And we correlate with young people. We even board. We have that, uh, that board between us and our, our, and our student. And even it caused me for me to go to become informal to them, I'll be, provided they feel accommodated. Mm -hmm. So when you mention ICT in a normal African setting, yes. it sounds like math. It's difficult. So how are you able to break down to someone for that they can understand that this is important for them? ICT is quite complex and depends on how you seek the, you, you see on the ICT spectrum. There is like a, the hard level coding, there is a low level coding, but as we focus on creativity, and anyone can become creative, may it be you, a small kid or even someone who is aged. And it's not even hard for anyone to, to understand coding. Mm -hmm. And the way we teach, we make it to be even understood is because we focus on practical. We don't teach theory as. Yes, I'm going to touch theory here, but by the end of that, if I'm telling you we need to develop a website, I want to see the website by the end of this. Mm -hmm. And another thing, I also hold your heart during the program. I won't tell you to create something that I haven't shown you. So I'll show you how we go about it then I'm going to give you like the assignment for you to replicate the same, same thing that's there. And again, uh, there is a lot of training that's coming and a lot of people embracing the ICT. So it's becoming widely accepted within our African context. Mm -hmm. yeah. You speak so firmly like a teacher or a mentor. Is it something you also do? I have trained for over 10 years. And actually, to underscore this, I started training when I was in high school. I'm the one who trained our business and history classes in Form 3 and Form 4 in the high school that I was in. So I started training from, for a long time. Mm -hmm. When I came to Nairobi in 2008, uh, my sister paid my first course in computer packages. 10 computer packages for 5,000 by that time. Mm -hmm. And after three weeks, I finished all the 10 packages. And in January of 2009, I went back to the same college and asked for a training job. And I trained there for another six months until June of um, 2009. Mm. In October 2009, I heard about Nairobi. I applied, and that's why I joined my Nairobi. I'm a beneficiary of Nairobi. Wow. And I graduated in December 2011 with a diploma in Math Media Design from Nairobi. Mm. Then in October 2012, I went back to Nairobi as a trainer. And I trained there uh, from 2012 to 2017 April. After that, I left and went to the corporate world, but I came back in uh, 2020, October again, and I have been training Nairobi's until August this year, when I stopped training because I'm currently now focusing on scaling on other regions, mm -hmm. because for the longest, Nairobi's has been based in Nairobi. But we thought of scaling to other counties, and in this line, we are focusing to, in Kisumu and Mombasa and I have brought the scaling program to Kisumu County. In your training area and uh, as Nairobi is growing to other levels, what other challenge, what challenges have you encountered during that journey? 
There are a lot of challenges, especially the ICT sector is very dynamic. And you, all, you have to always be on top of the things. Mm -hmm. Today, you are doing things this way. Tomorrow, things are being done differently. You can never afford to sleep. And uh, despite us having other responsibilities, I have to ensure even the curriculum that we train is up to date. I can even sleep today, tomorrow I come up with a totally new different curriculum to ensure our curriculum is responsive to the job market. We don't just train. We even listen to our business partner who hire our beneficiary to ensure whatever you're training is relevant in the job market. Mm -hmm. And another challenge that we get, you find some young people who don't take this seriously. And uh, it's a pain because I always tell young people, I got whatever I have where I am today because of Nairobis. Mm -hmm. If I didn't take it seriously, I couldn't be where I am today. And remember, I came from a disadvantaged background. Despite having finished my class eight, I couldn't make it to the campus. I missed the joint admission board with three points only. Mm. My parents couldn't educate me to campus because we weren't that felt capable. And was it not for Nairobi, I couldn't have got what I have today. And I'm a proud software developer. I could on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to create two very complex systems. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy. But when I see young people playing with these opportunities, that's a, a sad affair to me. Another thing, you may find that uh, we don't have uh, like support everywhere we go. Uh, there are even parents who don't understand the program very well. And uh, although you have been trying to reach the communities to create sensitization, for them to be able to understand the program and embrace it. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the challenges. Another challenge that we have had is us getting accreditation by Nita Tiveta. And uh, because uh, Nita Tiveta, as Nairobis, we believe in a dynamic curriculum. Uh, Nita Tiveta, uh, whenever you go to submit for a curriculum, they need like, uh, they are using quite an outdated curriculum for us. And me, I need, I need a, a curriculum that doesn't tie me. I need a curriculum that's going to give this young person an edge to the job market. Mm -hmm. A skill that young person can work, not even locally, but internationally. And especially with the most remote job nowadays, I'm looking for uh, people working with modern most recent and modern technologies mm -hmm. yes wow. and uh, there are certain misconceptions around the tech uh, world whereby people say when we get into ict it's dangerous there are dangerous platforms out there so how do you set the record straight and educate people on that ict is a it's a, like a two-sided coin it has its own advantages its disadvantages it has its own benefits its own dangers it's like just fire fire it's both dangerous and very useful, mm -hmm. but we never say we never use fire, right? Yes, we, we always continue using fire, but if you misuse fire, mm -hmm. it's going to burn you, burn the house, or even burn the entire community and the entire country. Mm -hmm. That's very possible. How we see ICT has the same, same pros and cons. If you're not very careful, you're going to find yourself on the bad side, even on the bad side of the road, because if you're using the internet to scam people, there is an article within our role mm -hmm. that can even make you rather jobs, uh, a jail sentence for that. Mm -hmm. But also, it has its own good side. One, it's creating employment. The other thing, it also enhances our communication, like how we can communicate to people who are in, a, in other places uh, out of Africa or even in this country. Mm -hmm. it's, all through, uh, it's all possible through the ICT. Another good thing about ICT, it's how things are changing. Things are changing very fast, rapidly. Long time, uh, like a few uh, years ago, you could only go to a shopping mall and shop there. Nowadays, you have the commerce, the online commerce. You're going to shop from the comfort of your home and get your things delivered. And those are, that's one thing uh, that's an advantage of the ICT. But we can never forsake ICT because of its cons. What we need to do is to create sensitization. And if we do that, people are, will be more aware of the dangers and be able to avoid them. So as Nairobi, do you create that sensitization as well? Yes, mm -hmm. we do that very well. I have teach my students about the dangers of the internet. And we have another program that's a, an impact program called SIDP, Skills for Inclusive Digital Participation. This one is a very flexible course, happens for at most five days a week, two hours a day, targeting youth, women and people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And this one targets what you call excluded groups. Like uh, those mama who don't know have ICT skills, mm -hmm. imagine 
taking them a program for five days, for two hours a day, and they can be able to learn digital skills. Mm. And they can be able to, do, to know how to sell their things online using a uh, social platform like WhatsApp, Status, Instagram, and Facebook. We also teach them about being safe online, even how to create safe, uh, strong password. We also teach them about fake news, especially, actually one of the impact that we got from that program, because so far you have turned over 3,000 3, young people mm -hmm. in, uh, young people, women, and people with disability in Nairobi and Mombasa. One of the feedback that we got was a mother who said, at least I know what my sons or my daughters do once they get on pay their, their phones. Mm -hmm. That's a very strong message coming from an elder lady. And even had we ladies who are as old as 65 years of age going through that program. Mm -hmm. It's very flexible, and we even try to teach it in a way that's the easiest way. We teach these ladies and these young people and these people with disability about government e-services like e-citizen, tax filing, the KRA portal, and so on and so forth, so that they can know like this exist and even if, if they go to seek that service in a cyber cafe mm -hmm. they are informed we even one of it also came in so hard because we did the program uh prior to uh, uh the august election general election and a lot of people said we were able to identify the fake news they mm -hmm. can be able to know uh news from credible sources mm -hmm. so those uh, we, that's it's our collective responsibility to ensure people are sensitized and they are aware of the dangers also as we disseminate the, the, the benefits of the ICT to the communities. Speaking of inclusivity, yes. there are certain youths who are already working in different sectors but would want to join your program. Do yeah. you have online courses or online training programs that you help to incorporate them as well? Currently, that are, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. But I have some good news. Mm -hmm. uh, in June, uh, we are in the process of developing our LMS. Uh, uh, learning man management system and this LMS is supposed now to extend these skills to people who cannot be able to commit full day. It's mm -hmm. uh, online self-learning, mm -hmm. uh, self-paced learning that you can do. But on another hand, you're going to use it as an, uh, our IGV, mm -hmm. income generating venture. Because remember, we are a trust, a non-profit. We rely on donor funding. And sometimes this funding even, uh, they are no longer there. How can we sustain the mainstream program? So when we open the LMS, it will be a paid service. Mm -hmm. Like you can get there, uh, check out with maybe with your M-Pesa or your credit card, and be able to get a course that you can do. Uh, you can learn online at your own say, uh, pace, and be able to be uh, to get our certificate eventually. Mm -hmm. Yes. You spoke of uh, salvaging opportunities. Yeah. So what can you tell a young person out there mm -hmm. who? They see the opportunities being grabbed by other people, mm -hmm. but they are still waiting for other more opportunities. What can you tell them? Uh, me, what I can tell young people is, first, we need to get the mentality of being given things. I have realized there are those young people, you are going to call them for a beneficial program, but they are not going to attend it because they are not stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell young people, you are today, defines your future. Make an investment today, and you are going to, be, to reap the benefits tomorrow. My word to them is, if you see these opportunities, grab them and grab them, please, because that can be defining your future. Thank you so much, Martin. I have learned, I have been educated. I will put that into practice. The investment you make today is what will give you fruits tomorrow. Do not worry about the stipend because the skill you will get is more than the stipend. That opportunity you're seeing lying there, but you do not know how to get to it, run for it. You will get the networks, you will get the marketing, and soon enough you will reap the benefits. You have been watching Youth in Action. I am Yangweso Grenis. Bye. This is the way to do it.